Right, so basically this is the box now with everything installed. The little sensor is just going to be attached to the top. Um, so we just take that off for a second and have a look inside. I'm just checking how much power we're using and it's it's negligible. Um, so I'm just going to bring it in. So we're using about 0.12 to 0.14 of an amp at 5 uh, volts. So nothing. So this little uh, voltage converter down here the, the, that's basically driving the USB from 12 volts. That was one I bought for the Raspberry Pi ages ago and it wasn't powerful enough, but of course it's, it's plenty powerful than this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to buy a really small USB to USB cable, so just to loop this here, and then if I ever need to reprogram it, I can just unplug this, plug it into the PC and reprogram it. So that'll be a way also of obviously being able to turn it off really quickly. This will go to my um, 12 volt supply from the boat engine. I'll put a fuse in that, but I'll put that on the outside. There's the little ESP32, um, and it's just sat on um, a couple of bolts just to raise it off the ground. And again, that means I can pull that out if I need to. And then I've just coiled up the power cable. So the center circuit board is the one that's actually providing the power. Um, that's the one that um, takes power from the board. And then basically it's a little breakout board. So I've got another couple of connectors there that I can pick power on. And then this is a one wire sensor. So it's just a, it is here. So just a digital one wire sensor. That's the sensor that will be going onto the um, exhaust. So this side is the RPM. Uh, electronics and um, that just needs wiring in through one of these little grommets uh, to pick up the alternator so those two go to the alternator and the one the other side is the voltage divider circuit so you can just see the little resistor um, and that's the one that will go to the um, temperature sensor that's in the side of the uh, engine heat exchanger so that's everything really that, that, that I wanted to try and do with it at this stage I'm thinking of fitting a, a smoke sensor um, or a water detection sensor. They're the only other two things that I was thinking of sort of throwing into the case at this time. Um, and then obviously if a pipe blew off one of the pumps, so either the uh, seawater pump or the um, internal coolant uh, pipe work, if one of those pipes came off and it dumped all the water into the bottom of the engine bay, we'd know about that as well. Um, so that, those are the sort of the other two sensors that I'll possibly experiment with before I kind of finish it all off. But just coiled all the wires up and just tried to make it look a little bit neater now. Um, but that's it. It's all it's all there and it's all you can see. Obviously, it's running now. So I've completed the installation now, and I'm taking quite a lot of feeds from the back of the alternator. So if I was to do it again, I would definitely um, wire all the earths together. So I'll just show you the back of the alternator in a second. So on this engine then, the um, this part here, this fuse part, is powered all the time. So there's power here constantly. So the power comes in from the main battery. There's a battery switch. It then goes into here. Then it loops up to the ignition, to the on-off switch or the ignition key. And then it makes its way back. And there's a feed here um, that goes to the back of the alternator. So if we just swap sides, so you can see on the back of the alternator. Now I have got um, a number of different connections on my alternator anyway, because we've got that Aardvark or Aardvark uh, battery management uh, system, which basically tries to boost the power slightly or monitors the batteries in different places. So it's not just reliant on the alternator's regulator. So the D plus terminal here at the top of the alternator is the one where the 12 volt ignition comes back to. So that goes live when you turn the on off switch on or you put the ignition switch on depending on what your Volvo panel has. So I've got a little fuse in here and um, that's obviously just to protect everything. So once, once you've got 12 volts here, you can then take a feed to power the ESP, which is just sat here in its box. So I've put all the wiring into these sort of like uh, braids here so that it keeps everything together. So we've got one sensor here, which is the temperature sensor. We've got the other sensor here, which has already got a wide cable onto it, which is the exhaust sensor, and that's all clipped on and, and done now. And then we're taking the positive feed from this, from D+, plus, so that gives me power. So that's got why that little fuse is in there. Um, and then we're taking the W, so this white wire is the alternator, um, RPM counter and then we've just got a couple of blacks which you can see in there 
so these are here so as i say if i was doing this again i'd definitely wire all the earths together i think that makes a bit more sense now but i wasn't really sure how it would work and whether it would affect anything so that was one of the reasons for doing it this way but it's working great um and, and like I see now what's nice is that we're getting actual run time so we're getting run time of when it's powered up so as soon as it's powered up uh, as soon as the ignition is on everything powers up and then i'm getting a, a, a proper run time now um, and, and all the other um sensors are working as expected so i've managed to get fuel consumption which i've updated the code to show again that's using the rpm pickup so now we know how fast the engine is running we can make a guest calculation on fuel economy based on the speed of the engine so that that's what we've done and that's just using code and um, so i've updated the github code to show that and um, what i would like to do is down in the front here is put a little bilge monitor because there's no way of knowing if anything was to go wrong with any pipes coming off or water there's no way to detect any water in here so that's what i'm going to plan to do so so I bought a little water sensor and i'm planning to stick that down at the front here so that's the only addition really i want to make to it and that's it that um, basically completes the installation for now so when the system first fires up, it presents itself with an SSID. You'll need to connect your device to this SSID in order to configure what network the ESP is going to connect to. In my case, mine's called Pi. So here I am um, setting the SSID and putting in the password. Just make sure that your Pi is set up on the 2.4 GHz band because the ESPs are only 2.4 rather than 5 GHz. Once that's done, a couple of seconds later, head over to Signal K and you should get an access request. Here you can see mine's just popped up and now I've got to approve this so that it can start sending its data across. Click access requests and in the box you need to put never. This means that the token is not going to expire. Once that's completed and approved you should start to see the data flowing from the ESP when it's got power into Signal K. Once you've got to that stage, you can choose how you're going to display the data. And here's one example that I've got using Grafana. Well, I hope that's been helpful. There'll be links in the descriptions to the GitHub code. Um, and I'll make sure I do another video when I've got the bilge monitor working correctly.